and kittens, thank you so much for being here tonight. Welcome to the Bebo Brinker Pulp Cabaret. Hello! Now, what you're seeing tonight is the third in a series of lesbian pulp cabarets. We're so glad you can make it down here safely this evening to our beautiful underground denizen. We hope you didn't get hassled on the way in. These pulp cabarets are brought to you by Cherry Manhattan Presents, and we have a summer full of fun for you. How many of you have already been to a pulp cabaret this summer? This is all part of a six month long lesbian pulp festival going on. And this is, I don't have to tell you, the gay event of the summer, I hope. It's involving the collaboration of some of Seattle's hottest actors and burlesque stars, and musicians and dancers and sexy audience members. And it's three parts. The first one is the one you're already at. This is the Pulp Cabaret. We're going to have one more of these here next month. It's the last Thursday of the month. And that's Thursday, July 28th. It's starring Hollywood, Trojan Original, Woo! Miss J9 Fierce, Fosse Jack, Taj, Gum Street Glory, Fuchsia Fox, and more. And on that one, we're gonna toss a little bone to the boys, because that's the story of Jack. It's a gay man's story. But then, we're gonna move it downtown to Act Theater for a seriously sexy, short, special engagement at the Central Heating Lab, August 25th to 27th. It's the best of pulp. It's one weekend, four shows only, 7.30 and 10 o'clock on Saturday. It's gonna be all of your favorites from this cabaret plus new favorites. We're also excited to announce that Miss Lily Verlaine is going to be joining us. Lily, where are you tonight? This gorgeous doll is going to be out there. Tickets go on sale next week at acttheater.org. And it's an all-ages event, but don't worry. There's a full bar there, too. <laughs> and we're going to finish up this Lesbian Pulp series with the crown jewel. It is the Seattle premiere of the scripted adaptation of Anne Bannon's novels, The Bebo Brinker Chronicles. And you'll get to see the whole story of Laura and Bebo, and it's directed by yours truly. It's right here at Rebar. It opens on September 15th, which is Ann Bannon's birthday, and I feel pretty good about that. That one is also starring burlesque star Hollywood as Laura, and one of my favorite Seattle actors, Ms. Rhonda J. Sokowski, the hot butch from last month, if you were here. She's also playing the title role of Bebo, and you're going to want to meet her and get seduced by her and buy her a drink after the show because she's oh, hot. Yeah. <laughs> tickets are on sale now at Brown Paper Tickets. Now, cats and kittens, I just want to let you in on a little bit of secret because you are already in the know. You're here tonight. If you have met one of our cigarette girls, sign in with them because that is your passport to Greenwich Village. There's a party happening here in October and it's only for you. It's only for the people that have signed in three times to the Bebo Brinker Greenwich Village Passport. Sign in three times, the party's free. You can't buy tickets. It's only for you. Sign in six times and you get to bring a date. Because otherwise you've got to meet a date when you get there, and that's also fun. You can sign in at any of the festival events here at ACT. You can sign in at the Bebo Brinker Chronicles in September. I want you to be at the party because it's for you. Now, very lastly, before I get you into our show tonight, we've got a couple of extremely special guests here this evening. I'm really proud to announce that the reigning queen of burlesque, Miss Exotic World 2011, Miss Indigo Blue, is joining us this evening. Yeah! She's exotic, she's erotic, she's the queen. <laughs> and then, of course, ladies and gentlemen, the gal that many of you came here to see tonight, the queen of lesbian pulp fiction herself, Miss Ann Bannon. <laughs> I do hope you had a chance to buy a raffle ticket because you know what you win? You win an autographed book by Miss Bannon herself. So we're going to be selling raffle tickets intermission. See one of those sexy kittens somewhere around. Buy raffle tickets from them. They're ten tickets for five dollars, and you could win an autographed book by Miss Bannon. Yeah. yeah. Now it's time to relax. I hope you all have a drink. I want you to sit back 
Enjoy the underground feelings of New York. The city is above us, and I want you to enjoy the sounds of 1955's hottest band, Gun Street Glory! I got a woman way uptown. No. 
A wash of heat flooded Laura's face. She bent over Beth and began to kiss her wildly like a hungry child, pausing only to murmur, Beth, Beth, Beth. Beth rolled over on her back. She looked up at Laura, reaching for her, breathing hard, smiling a little. And her excitement consumed the last of Laura's reserve. Her lips found Beth, and she found them welcoming.
conversation with him. He, like Beth, was road-weary and emotionally exhausted. Surprisingly, he and Beth were experiencing a similar internal conflict. Beth explained to the man that she'd left her husband and children in search of her one true love, a woman. The man gave her these words of advice. Yes, in New York, you'll have more freedom to love a woman than you would back home. But there are still dangers for people like us. Even there, darling, you must conform enough so that you can survive, that you can survive in this world. But balance that with being true to yourself just enough that you can actually live with yourself. And before she and Emperor Fabulous <laughs> parted ways, he shared this story with her to help make his point. Now that I've escaped from scathing eyes, mine no longer have to hide. They walk with you, and I want them nude so you can ocularly listen to each glisten of my attitude. The subtle expression that gets your attention to let you know we're both here for that same convention. Yeah. <laughs> the barrier of my brows. <laughs> barrier bows beneath my brows. It is both my flag and my shield. A nation hiding now a homeland revealed. You can probably tell, since I'm wearing pink, that I'm a little bit pink. But don't get me wrong, I'm not a commie. I just want you to come here and meet me. A seat, see? It's open. It's all yours. It's open. It's all yours. I Order a stiff drink, one for you. Hoping that my cue is taken, you move, not shaken, not stirred, but smooth, like a top shelf liquor that's been filtered more times than both of our histories combined. My small talk shrinks beneath your towering frame. My attempts at excavating your origins are poorly aimed. Yet with each query you deflect, I'm queerly more connected to the irises I'm inspecting, the gold flecks upon a mossy ring, then trancing me. And suddenly, we're dancing, no? Just so fluidly, you're pulling me across the floor. That's how it seems, you whisper. Your breath steams in my ear. Let's get out of here. Teeth clenched tight with adrenaline. I see the tardy introduction. I beg reciprocation. But all you do is tilt your hat, squint the mass of a moment, and say, you don't need to know that. The seduction of strangers, a long list of dangers, flashes before my eyes. I go blind because you've obliterated every crescent of my critical mind, claiming me in your untold name. This substitute affection changes pace in my direction, flips my nipples, press against the cold brick wall. I grab it where I can. Yeah. Even standing, as I'll never fall in love when I'm still on the run. And just that quick, the nervous bliss is done. I 
I shove myself haphazardly back into my casings as I listen to the pacing of your boots losing volume down the alley. I rally butterflies that are quickly dispersing from my gut into formation to assist in the nursing of the wounds that I endure in this trial of bursting from the shell of isolation. I must now return to you. I turn back towards that unmarked door. Oh, pretty young woman, I have grown to adore. Grown to adore. <laughs> Absorbed most of this from a corner in her bar. She approaches close enough to banter. A wink. Then her eyes glow like lanterns. A sassy nudge. Then she explodes into laughter. <laughs> She doesn't judge me, so why should it matter? If sometimes she chatters without proper cause to mine the biggest piece of gossip in this tiny little tavern. Well, when I saw you leave knowing you, I just assumed you were dashing off to tie the knot. You gotta fill me in. Wait, why the long face doll? Short honeymoon. <laughs> so, what's his name? And as soon as I sink back into that same seat where I ordered too tall and neat, I murmur, Riley, my most honest reply. You don't need to know that. 